Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.4 to the public. iOS 17.4 is out around the world at the same time to all iOS 17 supported devices. That means everything from the iPhone XS, XS Max, XR, all the way up to the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. Now there's a lot of new features and changes to talk about. And the first thing is there's a new modem update in this version. If you're coming from iOS 17.3.1, you've had some connectivity issues, whether that's with cellular or anything else. Hopefully this resolves those issues. Now, as far as new features, let's get right into those. The first thing is the first time you restart this, if you have an Apple ID assigned, you'll have a new hello screen with your profile picture. You can see that here, what it looks like. I was able to capture it before, and it just basically says hello in different languages like it always has, but it has your profile picture from iCloud above it. Now, one of the major features with this update is sideloading for the EU. The European Union is set to have alternate app stores, and now you can also set them as default. There's a couple different app stores that will be available very soon, Set App and Epic Games for things like Fortnite, and the app store now also allows game streaming apps. So that's going along with all of the changes in the EU. Unfortunately, it's only on iPhone and only in the EU. Also in the EU, you'll be able to set default browsers with more options where it doesn't utilize the same code that Safari does. And additionally, you'll have alternate in-app payment methods. You'll also have third-party notifications for things such as malware if it's on third-party apps. And Apple is also now allowing developers to request access to hardware and software features they didn't have before. So all of those things go along with that, along with NFC changes and more. But again, it's only in the European Union. The first major change we'll see everywhere is if you have an iPhone 15 model, iPhone 15, 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, or iPhone 15 Plus, if we go into our settings, go down to battery, you'll see it's changed right away. It now says battery health and says normal. If this was to go bad, it might say replace or it would say unrecognized. If we go into this, you'll see that they've moved the cycle count from the about page to this page. Hopefully they'll bring this to older devices, but so far they haven't. And of course it shows your maximum capacity and cycle count here with your manufacturer and first use date. Additionally, with this update, if you have an iPhone 15 series phone, Apple's actually said that it's good for a thousand cycles to bring it down to 80% capacity in ideal conditions. This used to be 500 cycles. They've now changed it to 1000. So it should get many more battery cycles and last a little bit longer. Now, if we go into music, you'll notice right away, it says home. It no longer says, listen now. Additionally, Apple has added the ability for music recognition to add songs you've identified directly to music playlists. So if maybe we play a song from a different device here, it identified the song using Shazam. And if we go into this, you'll see here, we'll go into it. We can now tap add to, and then we can add it to any of our different playlists. So that's something they've updated it with. Although I thought some of this was there before. Also, if we go back into the music app, go to home, and scroll down, we have different playlists such as Get Up Mix. We also have a new heavy rotation mix that they've added. This is available for everyone though, right away. Additionally, this has added support for Beats Solo 4. So those new headphones coming out, those will actually have support now. Another thing that's new is if you're using your AirPods, maybe they're connected to an iPhone or some Apple device, and then you go to switch it to an alternate device, maybe it's a Windows device or Android, it will now notify you. And when it's connected, you'll see here at the top, it says in use by other device. I connected it to an Android phone and it lets me know that it's been moved over to something that's not an Apple device. To go along with music, they've updated podcasts as well. The first thing you may notice is we have a new home button here at the bottom, just like we do in Apple Music, sort of unifying everything. Also, we have a floating play bar that's down here at the bottom. So while you're listening to an episode, it sort of floats there. Things scroll past it, as you can see there. And one of the biggest updates we've seen here is if we go into a podcast, maybe resume this one, you'll see we're in the podcast, if we tap this button here, we now get a transcript of the podcast. We've got a full transcript. We can scroll through, tap if we want to play a specific area, and it will play right at the same time. And we can also search directly in here, maybe for the word iPhone. It's not there. Maybe Apple. You'll see they mentioned it two times, and it brings you right to where it's mentioned. So this is a great update. You can see specifically what you're looking for, and they seem to update after a few days where it sort of scans everything. But at least we have these transcripts, and I think that's a great addition. 
Additionally, any of the highlighted text can actually sync in English, Spanish, French, and German. So that's been updated. And also to go along with music and podcasts, Apple has updated books similarly with a new home button down in the bottom left. So again, just sort of unifying things across the OS. Now messages get some major updates this time around as well. The first thing is a bunch of new emoji. If we go into messages, you'll see we have a bunch of new emoji to comply with the latest Unicode standard. Unicode actually updates this and then Apple and Android and Windows all update their devices to match the latest standard with their own artwork. So here you can see we have a few different ones with mushroom, we have a lime, a phoenix, a head turning left to right, a head nodding up and down, a broken chain, a couple different family icons, as well as someone in a wheelchair facing right, someone in a motorized wheelchair facing right, as well as someone with a walking stick facing right, and someone kneeling or walking. All of those are available. Some of the previous ones were facing left. You, of course, can change the different skin tones as well to go along with every single one of those. So that's new in 17.4. And also something that they've added is an all-new encryption system called PQ3. Apple introduced it the other day on a website. Apple says iMessage with PQ3, the new state-of-the-art in quantum secure messaging at scale. It's a new way to keep things more secure over time. Even as things progress, it's supposed to keep it more secure and end-to-end -end encrypted, making it more difficult for anyone to actually gain access to your information. So I'll link this in the description if you want to read all about it. It's quite complex and there's a lot about it, but it's a whole paper about what they've changed, what they've updated, and how they've made it more secure. Additionally, in iMessage, there's some new updates for business. One of the things that's been updated is if you have businesses and messages, it can provide trusted information for things such as order statuses, flight notifications, fraud alerts, and other transactions that you opt into. There's actually a setting for this. If we go into our settings and we scroll down to messages, within messages, if we scroll to the bottom, you'll see there's a new option for messages for business. This is actually enabled by default and it says get updates on your orders and other transactions if you've chosen to receive them on a business's website. So that's something that they've brought with this update and you can see more information with it here. Siri gets a really nice update for those that actually speak multiple languages. If we go into our settings and go to Siri and search, we have a new option for messaging with Siri. Under messaging with Siri, if we have an enabled, you'll see that we have different options for different languages here. So it says red messages, German, Korean, and French is what I have here so far. But if I add languages, we have a bunch of different options. So Arabic, Chinese, Danish, Dutch, Finnish, Hebrew, Italian, Japanese, all the way down to Swedish, Thai, Turkish. We have Russian, all sorts of different languages. And if you have all of these selected and maybe someone messages you in one of these languages and you have it enabled, it can read back in that language. So if it was messaged to you in German, it will read back in German. In English, it will read back to English and so on. Additionally, if you have Hindi selected, it can read back in a combination of English and Hindi as well. So if you have all of those enabled, they'll now work. Addition to this, you can now use Siri with the word hey in front of it or just use the keyword in general for the word in German. That will actually pop that up and now work properly. We also have a new widget this time around. If we go to our home screen here, go to add widgets. Under widgets, if we scroll down to where we have clock, under clock we have a new one called City Digital. City Digital is a new one that actually responds to time of day. So you'll see the time of day, it's dark right now outside, so it's actually dark. When it's light outside, it will be light, and it's a little bit different than the one we have here. So it's changed just a little bit, and it's a nice little update if you want one that corresponds with the time of day. With iOS 17.3, Apple added a new feature for stolen device protection. They've added a new option for this as well. Under settings, under face ID and passcode, if we scroll down, you'll see we have stolen device protection. Now we had that before, but if you had this enabled and maybe you went to an Apple store and turned it off, you would actually have to wait and have a security delay. While that's helpful in some situations, while you're home or in familiar places, that's not necessarily helpful. So now you have an option for away from familiar location and always. If you have it away from familiar locations when you disable this, it will then prompt you and make you wait 60 minutes. So if we turn it off to always, turn this off, it verifies with face ID, and then it says start security delay. 
or we can cancel it altogether, but we'll have to wait an hour before we can do anything as far as maybe erase the phone or something else. Also in settings, if we scroll down and go to privacy and security, scroll down a little bit further, we have pass keys access for web browsers. It's a new option. You'll see here where it says applications that have requested the ability to see which websites and apps you have saved pass keys for. That's what will actually appear here in the future as you have different web browsers ask for that. That may be more for the European Union. Though. Within the phone app, there's an update as well that I think a lot of people will appreciate. If we go in and use the phone dialer, and when we're calling someone else, we now have a blurred version of the background that we have for our wallpaper. So that's a nice little update that shows us a blurred version of that, where before it would just be sort of a gray background. If you do have a contact card set though, that will show instead. Also something Apple's added with the phone dialer is call identification now displays Apple verified business names, logos, and department when available. So if it knows that information, you'll see more about that as far as logos and things like that that relate to the business. If we go into shortcuts, there's an update here as well. If we tap the three dots in the upper right, then we tap the drop down arrow, then we go to add to home screen. This is an all new UI compared to what we had before. Before we just had a simple option, now we have a background, we can select a photo, different colors, or glyphs as well. So this has been completely updated if you want to add this to home. Also, if we create a new action, go into here and type physical, there's actually a new get physical activity option. So we now have that as an option if we want to maybe create a shortcut based off of that alone. Within the App Store, there's a couple updates as well. If we go into the App Store, tap our account in the upper right, you'll see we have a new option for apps. We can see all of our apps or go into our purchase history and see everything we've purchased, whether that's a subscription or something else. So you can see all of the different things here, and then you have the option to sort them as well based on a date range, cost, type, or family member. If we go into our Apple Wallet, there's an update there as well. Within Wallet, if you have an Apple Cash card, we now have the option to use a virtual card number. And you'll see it says you can now use Apple Cash to make secure online purchases with Safari Autofill when Apple Pay is not available. So you can set that up as you'd like and then add money to it if you want to pay for something online. There's also a new option for Apple Wallet in Analytics. If we go into our settings, then we go to Privacy and Security, scroll to the bottom, then go under Analytics and Improvements, we have a new option for Improve Apple Pay. You can either enable this if you want to, but it's disabled by default. There's an update for Apple CarPlay that if you're using Apple Maps in your supported car, you can now have maps not only on the center display, but also in your instrument cluster as well. You have to have a supported car such as a BMW or some others, but you'll be able to move it from the center to the instrument cluster or back and forth. TV gets an update also. If we go into the TV app and maybe just tap on a show here, scroll down a little bit, the new how to watch section has been updated also. So now we have sort of a card style where it shows where you can watch this depending on the app that actually has it. Now, if you use FaceTime and you're familiar with the reactions, you can now disable those in third party apps. So zoom different calls like that. If maybe you were giving a thumbs up and it was showing a background with that, that can be disabled now with 17.4 in those third party apps as well. Files also gets an update and this is just a graphical update, but you'll see they finally updated the icons to match what we have all throughout the OS. Prior to this, you can see what they looked like, where it would show iCloud Drive with the old icon. Now they've just updated the icons throughout. Now there's another feature that Apple didn't talk about, but if we go into notes, and maybe we want to share this note and collaborate with someone else. We can now actually use the airdrop method by bringing two devices together to actually collaborate. However, because these are on similar accounts, it won't work, but you'll see it says collaborate via airdrop not available. You can send a copy using airdrop. So you may have this option now, and the same is true with Game Center to play a game with someone else. So that should actually work when you bring it close together. Also, if you have a device that uses mobile device management, that will now support the auto dimming feature on your devices. That wasn't an option before for some, so that's actually something that's been updated. Also, if you have ear pods with the USB-C connector or you have the USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter from Apple, iOS 17.4 can now update the firmware of those devices. So what they would need to update for, I'm not sure, but it now has that option. Also a very small update is if we go into photos and maybe we want to set this wallpaper, we'll do use as wallpaper, then we tap add, then we tap customize home screen. It will no longer auto blur it if you're trying to set it from the photos app. However, if you set it from the lock screen, it will try and do that.
Now, along with this, there are a bunch of different splash screens that you may have already seen where it will pop up the first time you open Apple Music, the App Store, or Apple TV. Those may all pop up for you to see. And also, there's some bug fixes in this update. One of the things is the notification bug has finally been fixed. So if we scroll down back up, it no longer just jumps in. This is great news where it just doesn't sort of jump around and fill itself in. That's been fixed. Also airdrop is working properly. You may have just seen that. Additionally, they fixed an issue where contact pictures were blank in find my. So if we go into find my and within find my, you'll see all of the different contacts I have actually appear to be mostly blank. There's a couple that are filled in. They supposedly fixed this with iOS 17.4, but I'm not seeing it for everyone. It only shows up for a couple. Also, they fixed an issue for dual SIM users where the phone number changes from primary to secondary and would be visible to a group they've messaged. That's supposedly fixed in this update. Also, there's some security updates. Now, based on when you're watching this video and if you check this website, I'll link it in the description, Apple will update this with new security updates. Sometimes they wait a few hours, sometimes they wait days before adding additional information here. But again, there's always security updates and you should see those here. When it comes to performance, general performance overall is quite good. In fact, using all of the iOS 17.4 betas has been very smooth. Things like ProMotion are very fast and using older devices seem to be fast as well. So maybe you're going through music. It opens up nice and quickly. Maybe you want to switch between different things such as browse or library, depending on your internet connection, it's going to load differently. But in general, things are quite fast, just scrolling back and forth, loading games and much more. In fact, just tapping between different menu options seems to be much faster than what we had in previous updates. As far as overall heat and thermals, well, since this is a big update, expect your device to be a little bit warm after installing this for the first time. It's going to take probably a couple days, sometimes up to a week to process in the background. So don't be alarmed if it does get a little bit hotter than normal. And it's been pretty good after you give it a few days to settle though. When it comes to the overall battery life, well, most people are reporting that it's the same as iOS 17.3.1 or better. If we go into our settings, you already saw some of my battery here under battery health, where I'm at 100% with 121 cycles. But the last 10 days, depending on the day, I had a couple hours and used 50% of my battery. You'll see if we go back a few different days. It gets me through the day, but you'll see three hours and 42 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 38 minutes of screen idle time. And I used about 75% of the battery, depending on the day, it's going to vary greatly, but it is getting most people through the day. And mine seems to be using more than most. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.4, well, you'll definitely gain a lot of features with this update support for other devices, as well as things such as security updates. So I would recommend it for the security updates. Most people have been pretty happy throughout the betas and it's getting more and more stable and it should be much more stable based on we've had it for a while. Apple's also working on the next version of iOS 17.5, which we could expect probably within the next day or two that should hopefully bring back some features they removed with early versions of iOS 17.4 betas. What that means is things such as Safari, the navigation bar actually was changed in this update. It was widened and then they brought it back. We also gained some new live activities for the stopwatch and the clock, and then they removed it. So if you swiped up, it would go into the dynamic Island that was removed. They also changed it. So the podcast widget would actually match the album art color. So for this one here, it would match the background. They've changed that as well and removed it. So hopefully they bring all of those things with iOS 17.5. Now, after iOS 17.5, of course, we'll have iOS 18 that will be shown in June where we're expecting some sort of a major redesign or at least a major overhaul of many of the features. We're expecting one of the biggest updates since iOS seven or maybe even the original iPhone OS. So iOS 18 is expected to be shown with beta one, probably in the first week of June or so. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, as far as overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look and run a new set of benchmarks and see what we get. Benchmarks completed and we have 2,880 for single core, 7,166 for multi-core. That's pretty good, but since I've been sharing a lot of these different features with you, the phone's been getting a little warm. And so I expected that to be a little bit low, but over the past weekend, it was pretty good, a little bit higher, and I would expect it to get much better over the following days. Of course, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up as well. So that's everything with iOS 17.4. It's pretty feature packed considering we should see iOS 18 soon in a few different months where we'll 
have a lot of different features. So let me know if you've found anything else I haven't mentioned in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.